Hello all, welcome to Weaver Academy. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through steps on how to set up a home lab for Elasticsearch security information and event management, which is a SIM, using an Elastic Web Portal and a Kali VM. You will also learn how to generate a security events on Kali VM, setting up agent to forward data to SIM and query and analyze the logs in the SIM. This is a great project that you can add your resume and talk about interview. So let's go and see. Uh, so you have to go to cloudelastic.co registration. So you can use Google or Microsoft. You can sign up with it. Or even you can go uh, to the cloud markets like Azure Web Service, AWS, Cloud Platforms, or whatever market you can go and you can get the Elasticsearch as well. Or you can use a email and password with this. Uh, then you just log in, sign up with it, and do it over there. So this is a very simple process. You just need to create an account on it. Once you create an account, uh, you will be uh, have to integrate it. So I have logged in. Uh, if you see that this is a page will be loading on it, would have a lot of options like securities and those things. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to integrate it. So let's click this add integration. So what I'm going to integrate is, uh, so this is the integration button. You just click it, it'll ask meeting. So now what I'm going to integrate, I'm going to integrate Kali. So Kali is, uh, again, I just going to utilize it, uh, this machine. So I am just going to play around it, uh, generating security events, and I'm just going to uh, see how it is goes. So that by default, I'll get a more knowledge on. So let's click the add integration. And this will take you to the uh, the plugins options. So there are a lot of integrations plugins will be there. If you see that there are like a, a tons of things are there in this option, I have to go to select elastic different. But if you see that there are like a lot of options are there. So it, it, it's good for means elastic search, you can integrate with the, any options, anything's over there. So, but for this thing, I'm just going to use a elastic different. Uh, so let's go and click. So this is basically what we'll do is uh, it will protect the host based. Uh, basically, whatever the logs are coming from the host, it will prevent and detect and alert me over there. OK, so let's go and Elastic Defend. And this is something like uh, I have to go and uh, add Elastic Defend here. And this is going to integrate. So let me install the agent. This is actually works on in agent base only. So Elastic's agent supports on a lot of uh, platforms like Linux, Mac, Windows, RPM, Debian, Kubernetes, and everything will be there. Uh, but I'm just going to use a Linux star. So let's me copy everything and uh, just paste it over there. So just copy to the clipboard. I have copied. Let me go to the terminal. And uh, simple as just paste this command. So it will, once you paste the command, it will start downloading the agent, Elastic agent, it's basically beat agent will be there. So then it is going to extract it. After that, it's going to navigate to this folder and then it is going to install this agent script over there. Uh, so this is a simple script which is already predefined it. So it's easy, anyone, even a, a beginner can do that. It is just copy paste and it will take some time to install the agent. Uh, so let's wait for the agents to be get completed and it is asking you want to install it yes please install and for run to start the service so i'm just clicking yes okay so if you see that the agent has installed successfully on the cali mission so now what i need to do is i need to do little bit setups so ls agent is uh, done uh, and if you say that one agent has rent enrolled it now i have to add this uh, agent into the integration. So basically I have to integrate with the certain policies. That is why it will be able to detect and work and those things. So by just clicking add the integration, this will take you to the uh, page policies. So you can customize the policies, but I just stick with the default policies. You can still, you can create a new policies. You can assign to this thing later on also. Uh, so this option. So now I'm just going to click confirming the incoming data. So just I need to ensure that agent is communicating with the, my uh, the state elastic different web portal. Okay, so if you see that the agents are communicating the Kali mission, the basically start sending the uh, logs via file beat, which is we installed it to the Elastic portal over there. Okay, uh, and just try to understand uh, my Kali sits in my local missions, and this is something there. So after analysis, just go to discover. Uh, there you can reconfirm one more time whether you are getting the logs or not. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, this web portal is running publicly, which is there in their uh, 
SaaS solution product. Uh, so basically, uh, their solution. And Cal is running on my internal, my in-house lab. Uh, so by just installing agent, it start communicating. So it's easy for it to set up over there. Let me switch it to uh, metrics and the search for uh, you can see that it will go into query in the metrics manner uh, and even you can uh, understand it is all just a parsing information so the logs are passed in the timestamp manner you are getting over there it is quite related to the splunk uh, but yeah but moreover in industry standards they are doing it uh, let me let me what i do let me start to try to do a nmap scan so basically i'm just trying to generate a event security event and see whether it is capturing or not so sudo nmap afn localhost uh, so basically i'm just scanning the local so let's the nmap scan to be complete uh, once the nmap scan is complete uh, we'll hopefully will able to see that event like port scanning events alerts or logs will be coming to the uh, in the log sessions over there. So let's give some time. Uh, hopefully the nmap scan will get complete in short period of time. Okay, so the nmap scan is completed. Now, uh, if you see that the nmap is scanned, what are things and it's a very simple scan. So just for the testing purpose. Now what I'll do is uh, just go to the K queries index. If you see that the beauty of the K queries, it's, it's listing all things over there. So let me search with nmap and see if it is okay. Let me switch it to logs because uh, we didn't create it the events, right? So let me switch it to logs because logs will and search for nmap. If you see that, yes, it the uh, nmap information, what command I have uh, dated everything, the so and uh, how many times the scans was going on it. So it gives all the informations, it's very well. So now what I'll do is little bit, I'll just go to the event level and drill down and see what are the informations are coming over there. To do that, I have to go to uh, observabilities and logs. Okay, so here I have to search with arguments. So here I have to process dot argue uh, is equal to. So the beauty see right, it is automatically help me to that. It's even the beginners can easily uh, learn the queries over there. So let me use a keyboard called nmap and let me see what are the events are generated over there and even you can add boolean expression and an or uh, so if you see that the process has been created for everything so let me click one event and see the full details of it so you can see that it is when it is generated it's generated uh, from where it is coming um, so how many as you can see that uh, from which IP source IPs are coming over there. So since it's a host name, so you're just coming over that one. And if you see that what host uh, and you see that command is coming, executing from there. So so it's very easy. So from using the, this arguments queries and I can do it. If you see the top, you can do a investigations from there as well. Uh, so now what I'll do is uh, now quickly we will go and try to create a uh, alert and we will see how to do that alert as well so that because whenever there is a before that we will try to create a small dashboard uh, so that we will have a little bit understanding on those things so let's click this three dot and go to analytics and check this dashboard there is a dashboard is there right so click the dashboard so here we are going to create a dashboard so basically there are like a predefined template dashboards are there but we are going to create a new dashboard so here uh, we have to create a x values and new values. So in this one, I'm just going to data view in the metrics instead of rather than logs. So here I just selecting a data histogram and uh, the x axis should be a timestamp. So that is why all the events will happen in a timestamp manner. And I'm just giving the minimum interval 30 minutes as it is. You can just again include empty rows so that I can understand how often the logs are coming and how often the logs are not arrived over. That is also gives me a then vertical axis, let me go and create it over there. Here, I'm just going to create a count. So basically, how many records are accumulating that is where. So if you see that, once I click it, automatically the graph is generated. So there are suggestions are there. So if you see that, uh, so line chart is there. You can click line chart. Basically, that will give you or overall the count, like uh, you can click it. And you see that there are 21 records has been repeated. So basically, it's a grouped record. That is why you are seeing on it. Uh, but I'll just create it with the current visualization. So I'm not going to modify anything. You can play around it accordingly. 
uh so now if you see that the logs was started generating the flows comes over there so that gives me like a little bit idea about it the log flows are coming on it in case logs are stopped then I, I, by default i just check the empty right right so that will gives me like idea about it or how long the logs are not generated so let me give a title to this one so basically this is says like log so this is something like to understand the logs uh, flow of it so i'll name it as a logs in flow and you can give a descriptions and those things as well uh, let me apply it and uh, good to go with it so if you see that it will always there so now what i'll do is let me uh, save this one uh, okay so what i'm doing is i'm just going to create a Okay, I forgot to save this one. So let me save this one. I'm so sorry. So let me name it as uh, my dashboard. Okay, so the dashboard is actually saved. Let me save it. Now what we'll do is let, let's go back to the alert. So let's try to create an alert now. So, so basically that is what important. So whenever, uh, now if you see that dashboard is actually created. So where you don't need to go to dashboards and all, you can just go to your dashboards and you can do it. Now we will create alert. So under security alerts. So basically what this alert we are doing is whenever the Nmap scan is there, alert will be triggered on it. That is what we are trying to do here is there. So in this one, uh, let's let's go. Uh, there are few queries you have to select it over there. So basically I'm here there. I'm selecting the custom query. After the custom query I have selected. So event action equal to uh, nmap scanning that is what i'm just going to see it over there if you if you're not sure about it just the previous event i just showed right so there is a name will be there so that you can pick it from there so nmap underscore scanning i just selected over there uh, now i just leaving the option other options as a default i'm not going to touch anything over there rule name you can modify accordingly nmap so here i'm just giving as a port map scanning detection uh, so that is a better one so let me change it uh, yeah scanning port scanning detection rule uh, that is what i'm going to name it uh, so it's basically any name you can give it so uh, for my just giving on it so you can give it and basically you can describe what is so it's just basically and map scanning uh, sorry for the typo let me uh, what you can select the priorities like medium high criticals and those so i'm just selecting as a high and what is the threshold risk score you can give it based on so, so you can give it and continue over there uh, schedule the rule uh, like every five minutes you have to state it and just give it back and those things you can play around it it's option are you are here is a very very important the rule action so once the alert is detected what it has to do it over there so there are like a lot of connectors out there so you can integrate the alerts with the teams or you can use a web uh, basically using a web you can send the alerts triggered on whatsapp telegram or whatever other things uh, there you can use it and you can use a slack or you can create as a ticket as well using a service now or you can send the alert as to the email uh, whatever the, whatever things you can do it you can easily you can do it over there so emails is simple uh, simple you just need to go and uh, use the connectors and do it otherwise uh, just let me go and show you the options what is available there. Uh, before that i'll show you that what is the last other responses for example if you just need to go with the actions like you want to isolate that machine or kill something is if it is something is running out you want to kill that uh, things you can do it over there so as i said earlier elastic things you can by default it comes with the cloud sftp it's a free since it is you are using it and but you can use your own sftp rules and you can send the email to particular over there but i'm not going to do i'm just going to create and enable the rule so now if you see that the rule is enabled successfully uh, so let's wait for it, the route to be generated, completed. And if you see that the severity is high and the score is three. So if there is, if suppose uh, any Nmap scanning has happened, automatically this rule will detect and uh, in the alert portal you'll be getting over there so you can keep play around with a lot of things and even in the, you can go to the dashboards and you can see the end maps again filter with the end maps and you can see in the log force over there uh, so a lot of options are there uh, so let me save it uh, because I, it says uh, yeah let me save it let me try to see other rules as well so you have to go to the same uh, these are the 
uh, rules which is pre-installed pre-configured everything so by just clicking uh, this bar uh, this into this dragging it you are enabling the rule so according to your uh, home lab projects and use testings over there and what other things you can do it so now what i'm going to do is i'm just enabling the ssh thing so that i'll try to see ssh brute force attack and see if it is uh, i able to play around it over there so let me first of all uh, let me see if it's SSH is working or not. So SSH Kali at the locals. Okay, so basically the service is not running. So let me start the service. Okay, uh, hopefully the service will be start. Let's give some time. Okay, so the service is started. So let me see the confirm. Yeah, if you see that the service is actually running over there. So now what I'll do is let me do a brute force attack uh, and let me reconfirm it whether it is now it should be. It should prompt for a password. That means that, okay, service is right. So let me do a Hydra and do a password brute force attack. So if you see that I have successfully password uh, target uh, things over there. And let's see if I can go back and see that the rules are detected. So that's mean uh, basically if you see that warnings are coming so so that means it's working over there let's let's closely take a one rule what they did in it over there so if you see that it is a potentially internal linux uh, brute force directions this is a rule is created and uh, if you see that based on the miter attack they have just created this policy some of the, these are the like they will give you like what is the range of the ips machines and everything will be given over there so by you can easily you can enable the rule uh, you can play around it or you can create a custom rules which i have showed a few minutes back so just take a look play around it so by this by doing all this practice you will get a more hands-on experience on the you you can upskill your shock analyst skills uh, because in real time you cannot able to do all this because man if you so you can be here you can uh create an alert by using a Kali so that you your skills on offensive security sites also will be a little bit enhanced. So this is one more rule. Uh, you can see this is a uh, basically talks about the uh, password if supposed successfully and then there is an investigation guide as well. So how to investigate this process and those things. Also. So that's what I said, right? So you can get a more uh, knowledge and alerts will be comes over there. So yeah, so basically now you are it, but it will take a time to generate the log and it comes over there. So this is how you can set up the uh, home, simple home elastic search uh, logs and you can play around it. Uh, so you can get a hands-on experience and the SOC analysis as well. And by enable, by just generating the alert, you are using uh, various things over there. Not only Linux, your limitations is not stop with the Linux as well. You can even, you can set up a Windows machine and you can enable all these rules and install the agent as we did it earlier, like for Kali. And you can execute PowerShell scripts and you can do it over there. So this home lab provides a valuable environment for learning and practicing the skill necessary for effective security monitoring and incident response using Elastic SIM. By following these steps, you can gain hands-on experience with using a SIM and improve your security monitoring skills and offensive security skills as well to you help you to become a successful security analyst or offensive security engineer. Thank you all for joining today in this exciting session. I hope you found the content informative. If you enjoy this video, please consider giving like to this video and also share your feedback in the comment below. Your feedback is essential for shaping the future of this channel. Ensure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on upcoming videos. Also, feel free to share this video with others who might find it interesting. If you have any question or need further clarification about anything shown in this video, don't hesitate to reach out to me via Discord. Lastly, a big thank to my subscribers and your encouragement keeps me motivated to create more valuable content for you. Stay safe, stay curious. See you soon with another interesting video. Bye for now. Take care.